1995, uh, which back then was known as the uh, Craftsman Truck Series. Uh, Curtis Turner, winner of the 1956 Southern 500. Inaugural winner at Rockingham, 1965, led the Grand National wins in 1950. Uh, most NASCAR convertible division wins with 38. Most NASCAR convertible division poles, uh, 23. And holds the record for the most NASCAR convertible division wins in one season. That was 22 in 1956. And most NASCAR convertible division pole wins in a single season, 16 in 1950. Six. So uh, there you go. Um, let's see if we can find the trunk. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the trunk car next time. I know it's in here somewhere. Um, oh, here it is. All right. But first, all right. So here we go. So uh, Ron Hardy Jr. Okay. Speaking of uh, Hall of Fame, Ron Hardy Jr. kept World Truck Series driver was actually nominated into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in this. Okay, so he'll be in the next class. Uh, this is Ron Hardy Jr.'s first year of eligibility, um, and uh, Hardy has 51 Camping World Truck Series wins and four Camping World Truck Series uh, championships. So there you go. Now Kurt Busch. Um, Okay, so Kurt Busch last year, uh, last week at Atlanta, it was this is Kurt vs. Kyle. Kurt Busch, which was uh, the pole setter for Sunday's Falls of Honors Quick Trips uh, 500, uh, he qualified to be the pole setter. However, Kyle Busch, okay, was popped with failed inspection. Kyle Busch, okay, uh, the 18, which actually beat Kurt Busch. Kyle Busch, the 18, covered the 1.54 mile Atlanta Speedway uh, in 28.925 seconds at 191.668 miles per hour, actually beating Kurt Busch by 0 .0013 seconds. Kurt Busch would actually get the pole because, uh, because what happened was Kyle Busch beat Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch wound up failing post-qualifying inspection and turned Kyle Busch's time was disallowed, uh, allowing Kurt Busch to be the pole setter on Sunday. So, uh, <laughs> talk about that, you know. Um, all right, and then Matt Kenseth had an issue, and here it is, a pit road penalty, round of green flag pit stops for tire and fuel, and was ordered to serve a stop and go penalty. And again, the gas man was handed a wrench, and the gas man grabs the wrench, places on the trunk lid of the 20, because he was holding the gas can and the wrench at the same time. Uh, it, even though for a brief moment, NASCAR pops the 20 team with a penalty, and according to the rules of NASCAR, the gas man cannot, uh, do, cannot do anything else while fueling, okay? And uh, Jason Radcliffe was trying to explain to the officials, and NASCAR waved the black flag at the number 20, temporarily uh, stopping his scoring. Um, and they wind up, Kenseth wound up going two laps down, one lap down for pit road penalty and infraction, and docked another lap for ignoring the black flag. Kenseth claims he didn't know about the black flag, claiming he couldn't see the flag due to the sun. <laughs> so, uh, they, there you go. Um, but they did have some issues with uh, communications, they were saying as well. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's win on Sunday in Atlanta was uh, in the 40, was uh, his 76th win, 76th career for Jimmy Johnson on Sunday, tying Dale Earnhardt Sr. for 17th on the all-time wins list. Johnson says, quote, It's such an honor, he continues saying, with the chaos at the end and the crash and the wondering about overtime and how it worked these days, I kind of lost sight of that. Um, and he continues saying, I remembered it on my victory lap, and I had to come out and throw a three out the window to pay respect to the man. There's a huge void in my career that I never had a chance to race with him, but at least I was able to tie his record. And uh, he stuck his hand out and put a number three up. gate for uh, number three. Um, what else we got here? All right. So the uh, Donald Trump car, and we'll go through this real quickly. We got some other stuff to go into, but we'll save it for uh, next time. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, some more stuff on Matt Kenseth. So here we go. All right. So uh, 
Also, the 78 car got popped for. Um, here we go. Let me give you this one too. I got a whole bunch of stuff that I got to get to you before we get to this weekend. And uh, let's see what else we got here. All right, so. Uh, according to Matt Crafton, uh, excuse me, uh, Matt Kenseth, um, uh, Steve O'Donnell said on uh, XM Satellite Radio on Tuesday, saying, quote, that it is purely safety, saying we, uh, we want the person gassing the car to be solely focused on doing exactly that and nothing else. So if that means they're going to place a tool on the car or whatever it may be, uh, place something else or do something else besides fueling while the gas can is engaged. That's a penalty. Matt Kenseth says, quote, when it comes to a miscue, we don't really, I don't anyway, dwell on that. Um, he said a bunch of other stuff, too. Um, but O'Donnell then says, uh, a bit of miscommunication. Going forward, I think we can improve on that. Continuing saying, our intent is to never to black flag a driver if we don't have to and put a driver, driver's lap down, laps down. So I think that's an area we can look at. But the call was not going to change based on any review. We had reviewed it, and that's the case. Source Fox Sports. And the 78 car Furniture Row racing team was issued a P3 penalty at Atlanta. News broke out uh, on Wednesday. Uh, RP got the scoop today. Crew chief Cole Perrin was fined $5,000 and suspended one race. In addition, the 78 team is docked 15 owner points and Truex Jr. lost 15 driver points. Uh, now, what happened was was they, they actually are appealing it. And uh, so this this we found out this morning. Then this afternoon we found out that NASCAR is actually going to hold off on the suspension until the appeal process goes through. Uh, so I just want to let you know about that. And NASCAR issued uh, warnings to a bunch of other teams as well. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 88 team, met, uh, met Benedetto. Uh, let's see. For a template inspection, fa they failed twice during pre qualifying inspection. The 32 team, Dale Jr.'s nephew, Jeffrey Earnhardt, uh, was also issued a warning as well and lost 15 minutes of practice time this weekend at Las Vegas. And the 32 team failed, they actually failed the template inspection three times during pre qualifying inspections. Uh, some other teams that got popped with penalties this week was the 47, the 83, the 88, the 83. The 98, the 95, the 3, the 31, the 27, and the 78. Alright, so uh, let's do it. The uh, the Trump car. <laughs> okay, here we go. And of course, the big news was uh, Brian France came out uh, and uh, Bill Elliott came out in there endorsing Donald Trump for president. But did you hear about the Donald Trump Sprint car? Uh, back in August of last year for the 2015 Knoxville Nationals, the 55th Knoxville Nationals, uh, Donald Trump, the Donald Trump Sprint Car, which was driven by uh, Roger Crockett and was presented by Casey General Store. It was uh, last minute as deals had to go through uh, lawyers and stuff. Um, so, and if you know the Sprint Cars, the uh, wing on the top said Trump. <laughs> Everybody knows the Trump logo. Um, so there you go. Knoxville Raceway, the uh, sprint car capital of the world. Knoxville Raceway located at 1000 uh, North Lincoln Street, Knoxville, Iowa, 50138. Located in Marion County. Uh, Saturday night sprint car races from April through September. Weekend events, some special uh, weekend events even uh, start early as Wednesday. So regular events at the famed track includes the 305 cubic inch, 360, 410 cubic inch sprint car racing. The track is governed by a 24-member fair board elected by Marion County residents. Owner-operator of Knoxville Speedway, Marion County Fair Association. Track surface is dirt, 1.5 miles, banking's at 8 degrees, uh, and lap record is 14.407 seconds. Brook Techno rushing, uh, rush racing in 2006. Um, and before that, before they uh, raced cars on air, it was actually a horse track. So there you go. And speaking of Trump, according to the press release, NASCAR CEO Brian France and Hall of Famer Bill Elliott have endorsed Donald J. Trump for president. Uh, they issued a statement there. All right. 
And uh, that's about it. What else we got? Uh, I know I got one more to give you before we get out of here. Oh, here we go. Atlanta's hottest moments. Tony Stewart, prior to Atlanta, back in 2002, uh, finishing 43rd, Smoke would come out, come to Atlanta and win his first 500-mile race, and this would be the first of three wins in 2002. 2001, Cracker Barrel 500, Kevin Harvick wins, beating Jeff Gordon three weeks after coming into the Sprint Cup Series. The 2000 Carol, uh, Cracker Barrel 500, Bobby Labonte beating Dale Senior by zero. 0 0.010 seconds. 1998, the Napa 500, the beginning of Jeff Gordon's career year, and what then was the Winston Cup in 1998. Jeff Gordon would go to record, uh, go and record 13 wins, 26 top fives, and 28 top tens in 33 starts. And of course, Carl Edwards' weekend sweep in 2005. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, will do it. One more time, here's the wrap-up for what's coming on this weekend. Again, Saturday afternoon is this weekend's Xfinity event, Saturday, March 5th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Fox Sports 1 and PR, and, and that's the Boyd Gaming 300. And that is with 200 laps scheduled. Then Sunday is Sprint Cup Series action, Sunday, March 6th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox and PR, and, and that is the Cobalt 400, and that is with 267 laps scheduled. And that... We'll do it. So we'll be back on Monday with uh, RP Express. Enjoy the weekend of racing, everybody. Racing Podcast Full Throttle back next week at 745 and uh, RP Express on Monday evening. From New York, from the Skybox, Bo Skybox Podcasting Center, this is RP Full Throttle.